You found the perfect place to set up your rain gauge, left it outside to collect precipitation, and now it's time to take your daily measurement. Ideally, you want to take your measurement the same time every day, preferably at 7 a.m. Not all of us can be that consistent. So as long as you observe your gauge between 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., your data will be shared on the map and compared to others. If you check your gauge any time outside of that window, your data are still accepted, but it won't be as useful to the people who depend on your morning 24-hour report. For example, meteorologists, farmers, and flood forecasters. Even if you enter your data later on, as long as your report reflects the time you observed your gauge, your data will be on the map. If your schedule doesn't allow for you to collect a measurement every day, there is a separate data entry form for entering multi-day reports. When we measure daily precipitation, we measure to the nearest hundredth of an inch. You may have noticed that your rain gauge has both an outer and inner cylinder. When water falls into the outer cylinder, it would be extremely difficult to measure the depth with accuracy. The inner tube acts as a magnifier. By squeezing the water into this smaller diameter inner tube, it stretches the measurement out in order to see the depth to the nearest hundredth of an inch. One inch in the outer cylinder will fill up your inner tube all the way to the top, where it says 1.00 inch. Looking closely at your inner tube, you will notice a small notch at the top. This is for overflow, or when it rains more than one inch. The water level may be over the one inch mark, where there are no marks to measure. You may have to give the cylinder a little shake to get the water line down to an inch or below, where you will be able to measure accurately. When you receive more than one inch of rain, you will need to pour your first inch out, and then use the funnel to pour the additional amount into your inner tube, writing it down each time until you have measured the entire amount. View our training animation called How to Measure Extreme Rainfall to learn more. To ensure an accurate measurement, please do not round. Also, make sure to put your decimal point in the correct spot, as it will make a huge difference. The most common measurement you will take will be 0, 0.0. But don't be fooled. A measurement of zero is just as important as any other measurement. Zeros help us keep track of droughts and forecast water supplies. And sometimes, the radar and satellites can fool meteorologists into thinking that rain is falling. Your zero could confirm that the rain evaporated before it landed on the ground. While it may not be as exciting as having rain in your gauge to read, zeros are valuable data. Sometimes you will find that your gauge has a little bit of moisture inside, but not enough to measure up to one one hundredth of an inch. In this case, you would report T for trace. In fact, you may witness rain or snow, but not enough to measure. Here again, report a T even if nothing landed in your gauge. When you have enough water in your inner cylinder to take a measurement, you may find that it looks like it has a small curve, or a thickness to it. This is called the meniscus. Always measure from the bottom of the meniscus to ensure an accurate measurement. Once you've got a measurement, record it in the report form in the field rain and melted snow to the nearest hundredth inch that has fallen in the gauge during the past 24 hours. Then empty your gauge and set it back outside. For more information on how to record a measurement while it is raining or snowing, or more details on how to measure if you receive more than an inch of rain, please check out our video on How to Measure Extreme Rainfall. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at info at